Here's to the state of Mississippi For underneath her borders the devil draws no line If you drag her muddy rivers, nameless bodies you will find Oh, the fat trees of the forest have hit a thousand crimes The calendar is lying when it reads the present time Oh, here's to the land you've torn out the heart of Mississippi, find yourself another... Well, as you can see, it's raining. <laughs> I always pick great weather for this stuff. But anyway, uh, this is the starting point of, um, of the, the journey of James Chaney, Michael Schwerner, and Andrew Goodman. This is uh, the location of the church, um, that they, the church burning where they came to investigate. And uh, after they did their initial investigation, uh, they, decided, they were trying to figure out the way to get home to Meridian. And they were going to ch choose this kind of more backwards route, but they thought that was going to be more risky because of, you know, well obvious things, but they chose to do a more standard route that would, uh, where um, they felt they would be safer, but that ended up being a huge mistake because the clan was really looking out for people like them and uh, ended up tracking them down and hauling them into custody uh, shortly thereafter. Boy, it's cold. Well, behind me, uh, right there. That is the former Neshoba County Jail. And this is where uh, Schwerner, Cheney, and Goodman were brought in for questioning uh, about what they were doing in Philadelphia, around Philadelphia. And uh, they were later released about 10, 1030 at night. And uh, you'll see what happens to them uh, at the next spot. But anyway, uh, also Martin Luther King, he stopped here um, in 1966 and he uh, knelt down here at this site and he prayed for the souls of uh, the three civil rights workers and also uh, just for the need for civil rights here in this area of the country. Well, after uh, Cheney, Goodman, and Schwerner were taken uh, uh, into custody and released about 10, 10.30 that night, uh, they began their journey back to Meridian along Highway uh, 19 South. And uh, sheriff, the sheriff and uh, other Klan members were, you know, in pursuit of them. And they stopped at one point to try to make a phone call, but they were kind of scared off from it because they knew that uh, they were being pursued. But they were brought here. They were captured uh, by the Klan members and brought here off of Highway 19. And they were questioned a little bit more, and then, they were, and then all three of them were murdered at this exact location. Now, uh, it's, it's strange to think, but the, the Klan members, they were treating us like a good old time. They had been drinking. They were even fighting over who got to kill who. And at one point, after the murders, one of the, one of the killers actually made a remark saying, Well, I can't believe you only left me the black guy to kill, but you know what? At least I got to kill a black guy. Now, he didn't quite use that same terminology. I'm not going to use the actual word, but you can probably pretty much guess what it was. But uh, after they were killed, um, they had to dispose of the bodies. And the, so they took them to an earthen dam uh, nearby here and covered them over. And then, of course, they all sw swore each other to secrecy. And they said that anybody that talked to the authorities about what had happened here, uh, they were going to be the next ones that were going to be killed. So I guess that's why it's so hard to get a conviction against anybody because they were all protecting themselves. And uh, at one point, the sheriff, uh, at one point, the sheriff was even, you know, getting so frustrated with FBI involvement into the case that he was like sitting here making remarks about like, oh, you know what, those three are just hiding out. They're just trying to get everybody all riled up, you know, knowing full and well, you know, what had actually happened. By here, um, now. It was pretty obvious who had done it. The Ku Klux Klan was heavily behind it, but even law enforcement was behind it as well. But the state courts here in Mississippi refused to um, prosecute anybody. They refused to even try the case. And so the national government ended up uh, you know, bringing some charges against some of the, the ones that were accused of it. And they, uh, the people served basically like minimal time for the murders. Uh, but it wasn't until almost 2005 that there were some students and a teacher working on a National History Day project where they were able to find like new evidence against one of the killers, um, Edgar Killam, uh, who was like a, a Baptist minister or had been a Baptist minister. And uh, 
they were able to uh, finally bring the uh, that case back to trial um, in 2005, and they finally secured a conviction against him. And uh, as far as I know, he's still serving his life sentence in prison. Well, in Philadelphia, they have attempted to sort of come to terms with what happened here. And at Mount Nebo uh, Church here in in uh, Philadelphia, they've got a memorial marker to uh, Goodman, Cheney, and Schwerner. Uh, this is not their grave site, though. A lot of people assume this is where they're buried, but it's simply a memorial marker marking the um, the fact that uh, of what happened here close by. Well, with that, that is the end of our journey, and uh, it's gotten so cold that my fingers are no longer right there. My fingers are no longer able to actually uh, work the iPad anymore. They won't even. Every time I touch the screen, nothing happens. So. Anyway, if you want to learn more about uh, the three civil rights workers or anything regarding the civil rights movement, I've got some resources posted on the website, and I highly encourage you to visit that and uh, learn a little bit more, because there's only so much you can fit into like a five to ten minute little mini documentary. So, anyway, thank you for watching, and uh, continue to check out my other videos.